If you're scared of what the comment section on this video is going to look like, then clap your hands. Hello everybody, Nikki Mara here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you've all had a fabulous week and are ready for yet another fun video. And let me tell you, as a Disney fan, one of my biggest pet peeves is when some of my favorite Disney characters get called by the wrong name. Believe it or not, there are many Disney characters who are either nameless or have multiple names, or even some fan-made names that are not technically recognized by the company. Well, over the years, as Disney has introduced more and more characters into their official canon, many characters have gone under some changes, whether by the company or by the fandom. And so today I am taking it upon myself to go through some of my favorite Disney characters who have controversies surrounding their names. If you're new here, hi, my name's Nikki Mara and I am a Disney content creator. I got my start over on TikTok, but have joined the YouTube community and I've been absolutely loving making long form videos for you guys, of which I have new long form videos coming out every single Friday at 5 p.m. So if you're not already, make sure to hit subscribe down below so that way you never miss out on future magic from me. And if you'd like to find me on any of my other social medias, my handle is at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's, and you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat for even more magic. <laughs> but today we gotta keep the intro short because we have a lot of lore to dig into. <laughs> so without further ado, we're gonna jump into some brief disclaimers and conditions today, of which I highly recommend watching because this video is definitely different than a lot of my other videos. I am technically considering this a ranking video, but I'm gonna get into how I'm ranking these characters in the conditions. So I definitely recommend watching both disclaimers and conditions, but if you would just like to jump right into the video and all of the mystery surrounding these characters' names, then you can head right to this timestamp. First and foremost for our disclaimers, I'm not associated with the Walt Disney Company, and so I don't speak for the brand or the company. This video is all just my opinion and my own personal research, and anything stated in this video is just my personal opinion and view of these characters. It does not reflect the Walt Disney Company. But secondly, I welcome any and all opinions surrounding all of these characters and their mysterious names down in my comment section. I am very curious to hear all of your opinions down in the comments, so make sure to tell me what you think of all of these Disney characters and the situation surrounding their names. And thirdly, I do want to give a brief spoiler warning for any of the movies that we're going to be talking about today. I don't plan on going specifically into movie plots, but for anybody who doesn't want anything spoiled from certain Disney animated movies, you can just jump right on up to the next number on the list. But next, moving on to our conditions. Today's video is somewhat of a ranking video. Today we're going to be discussing Disney characters who have some sort of discourse surrounding their name. They can either be a nameless character who fans have created different names for, they can be a Disney character who has multiple names, or they can just be a Disney character who people tend to get the name wrong of. Also keep in mind that in this ranking, I am going to be referring to all of these characters as the name that I personally choose to use when referring to them. So when I give you the ranking number we're on and the name of the character, that is what I technically align with. I'm gonna give it to you right off the bat. <laughs> and so today I have selected 11 characters and believe me when I say I am so excited to jump into the history surrounding their names and all of the little interesting changes that have happened over the years. And while I'm not going to be ranking the characters today based on a personal favorites list, I am going to be ranking them based off of who I think has some of the most controversial opinions surrounding their names. And I am sure that the characters mentioned in this video, specifically towards the end, are going to bring up quite a bit of conversation down in the comment section. But with all of those disclaimers and conditions out of the way, I believe we are ready to jump into our video. But really quick before we get started, I do want to go through some very brief talking points that we're going to be sure to touch on for each character. First and foremost, we are very specifically going to be defining the character that we are talking about. We're gonna be sure to mention which movie or movies that you can find them in, as well as who voiced them. We're going to be talking about their role within the movie. And then finally, we're going to be going through the very strange situation surrounding their name. So if you are excited to jump into today's video, then sit back, relax, grab yourself a snack and a drink, and let's talk about the real names behind some of your favorite Disney characters, or lack thereof. <laughs> we are starting today's list all the way down at the bottom at number 11 who is the Ringmaster. Now, while you might not really recognize this character right off the bat, he does come from a very popular Disney movie. The Ringmaster can be found in the Disney animated movie, 
Dumbo. And this Disney character was voiced by Herman Bing, who, interestingly enough, actually worked as a clown in his real life. And if you have seen the movie Dumbo, then you'll know that Clowns are actually a big part of the story. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Ringmaster technically serves as the main antagonist in this film. While technically he rides the line of villain in this movie, he is the overall ringmaster and leader of the circus that both Dumbo and his mother are a part of. When some commotion hits the circus and the performance doesn't necessarily go the way that the ringmaster wants, he separates Dumbo from his mother and locks up his mother. He significantly dislikes circus failures, and so this sort of brings out the ill-tempered nature of the character. I feel like villain is sort of a harsh word to describe him, however I will say that he just really wants to do a really good job at his job, but he does all of that in a very questionable way. But then again, the comeuppance that he gets at the very end is pretty justified. <laughs> the Ringmaster definitely leads a very questionable circus, However, it is very nice to technically see the decisions of the circus come around at the end of the movie when Dumbo and his mother are actually exalted as some of the best acts in the circus and end up getting treated very, very well. We see them get their own private car in the back of Casey Jr. And while technically we don't know whether or not that was the decision of the ringmaster, I think we can assume that, you know, he might have a good side to him. But let's get into this character's name or lack thereof. While in the live action version of Dumbo, the ringmaster's name is technically Max Medici, in the original animated movie, he doesn't have one. He is simply referred to as the ringmaster or boss by other characters in the movie. And this is definitely one of the more simple characters to describe surrounding the story behind their name. Back in the early days of Disney, certain characters weren't specifically named, but were more so referred to by their role in the movie or even their occupation. And this is one of the prime examples of that situation, where the ringmaster wasn't necessarily an important enough character to name according to the Disney company, but they had to refer to him as something and so they just called him by his occupation. But yes, as for his name, the ringmaster. And that's kind of it. <laughs> but as for one final fun fact about the ringmaster is that he was actually inspired by the next character we're gonna talk about. So with that, friends, we're gonna move on up to number 10 on my list, who is the Coachman. Now, the Coachman can be found in the iconic Disney film, Pinocchio. And while he may not be a technical fan favorite of a lot of Disney fans, I feel like the reason for this is that he tends to get lost within the plethora of villains that this movie has. <laughs> now, the Coachman is beautifully voiced in this movie by Charles Jadels, and this character is technically inspired by a character from the novel Pinocchio by Carlo Collati, whose name is Lomino di Burro, or the Little Buttery Man. Now, in contrast to number 11, the Ringmaster, the Coachman is a fully-fledged villain. In this movie, we see the Coachman picking up misbehaving young boys to bring them to Pleasure Island. There on Pleasure Island, the boys partake in quite a bit of mischief, but what they don't realize is that Pleasure Island is actually quite magical, as it eventually turns all of them into donkeys. Once turned into said donkeys, the coachman will then sell them to the salt mines. The entire process of bringing them to Pleasure Island and then taking them away to the salt mines, all of it goes under the supervision of the coachman. And while technically he is the third antagonist to be introduced in this film after Honest John and Stromboli, I honestly feel like I would have a very easy time saying that he's probably the scariest villain in this movie, considering there's really only one villain who comes after him in this movie, who's Monstro. And while the coachman may not have the most screen time, I definitely do think he leaves a lasting impression as a very scary image from this movie. But as for the reason why he makes it onto today's list, the coachman is simply always referred to as the coachman. Yes, much like the ringmaster in the early days of Disney, a lot of characters were just referred to by their occupation or the role that they served in their Disney movie. And so the coachman is just referred to as the coachman. Ah, the beginning of this list is so easy to go through because no names have been created for these characters. Thankfully, at least not all of them have. <laughs> yes, pretty soon we'll be getting into some of the more juicy character names, but as of right now, my job is pretty easy. So you know what? I'm gonna take the victories while I can take them. <laughs> and so my friends, we are going to leave number 11 and number 10 behind, and we're gonna get into a more difficult one. <laughs> as next, we're moving on up to number nine on my list. 
who is the queen. Now the queen can be seen in the movie Sleeping Beauty, and she is actually the mother of Princess Aurora. And she also happens to be married to King Stefan. Now for this video, while I did want to give props to all of the voice actors, unfortunately we really don't know 100% for sure who voiced the queen in this movie. She was animated by famous Disney animator Mark Davis, and she bears a very strong resemblance to her daughter, Princess Aurora. And while yes, it is confirmed that her voice actress is technically declared as unknown, many people have speculated over the years that actress Verna Felton actually is the voice behind the queen. Now, Verna Felton is also credited as a character in this movie who is Flora, the good fairy who wears red. And the reason why this might be an uncredited role is that the queen's role is so incredibly small in this movie. She has two lines, one of which is, and you're not offended, your excellency? And the other is, oh no. So whoever ended up voicing her, I'm sure it was not a long day on set. <laughs> And while yes, I am one of the individuals who really truly does believe that Verna Felton is the voice behind the Queen, I can't say it with 100% certainty, so take that with a grain of salt. But I do think that is relatively safe to say, considering that the relationship between Disney and actress Verna Felton is quite a healthy one, considering she has voiced many iconic Disney characters. A few of whom are Flora, the Queen of Hearts, Aunt Sarah, and even Fairy Godmother from Cinderella. Okay, let's get back on track. The Queen. Now, the Queen has a very, very small role in this movie. She really doesn't influence the plot in any way other than being the mother of Princess Aurora, our titular character. And within the animated movie and her first ever appearance from the Walt Disney Company, she is not given a name. She is referred to by other characters as simply the Queen, which begs the question, where does the name Queen Leia come into the picture? Or Queen Leia? spelled L-E-A-H. Well, from my findings and my research, while technically no official name was given to her in the final movie or the development sheets of the animated movie, it is allegedly said that her name was intended to be Queen Leia by the animators and directors. And I say allegedly because a lot of different stories can come up and people can claim that it was a fan-made name, but I did find record that there might have been discussion of naming her Queen Leia in production. However, I'm guessing it was deemed that this name was just not important enough to the movie Sleeping Beauty, and so eventually it was left out of the movie and the queen ended up nameless. And while I have heard the name thrown around quite a bit as of recently for Sleeping Beauty's mother, considering it never ended up in the final animated movie, I have a really hard time considering it canon. And so whenever I'm referring to this character, I only like to refer to her as the queen, or Princess Aurora's mother. I don't dislike the name Leah or Leia at all. I just really don't find it canon, especially considering if you ask Princess Aurora in the parks about her mother, she'll really only refer to her as her mother or the queen. Oh, but with that, my friends, we're gonna move on up to number eight on my list, who is a character that visually you will recognize a lot more than any other one on this list, so far anyways, as at number eight is Prince Charming. Now, which one are we talking about? Because every princess has got one. Well, for this specific number on my list, we are talking about the Prince of Cinderella. And so with that being said, Prince Charming can be found within the Disney animated movie, Cinderella. And although he is most commonly referred to as Prince Charming, the prince does go unnamed in the original animated movie. In the original animated movie, William Phipps was the speaking voice of the prince, and singer Mike Douglas provided his beautiful vocals for the prince. Now, while Prince Charming, the name, might not appear in the original animated movie, it is widely used by the Disney company. Seeing as the coined term Prince Charming appears on merchandise, can be found in the video game Kingdom Hearts, and is also the namesake of the carousel in Walt Disney World in Magic Kingdom. As right behind Cinderella Castle, you can find Prince Charming's Regal Carousel, which is a carousel themed surrounding Cinderella. Now, while you might think that this prince is just nameless and that's why he would make it onto today's list, well, that is technically not the case, <laughs> as we do have some names for him that we have to talk about. Many years ago, a very infamous TV spot was released from Disney France. This TV spot talks about a lot of the Disney princesses and their princes. And in one particular section of the TV spot, they talked about the Blu-ray and DVD special edition release of Cinderella, referring to Cinderella's prince 
as Henry, or in French, Henri. Apologies for that pronunciation. <laughs> Furthermore, when Cinderella was introduced in the Once Upon a Time TV series in season seven, the character Cinderella marries a man named Henry. And while these two instances of the name Prince Henry might in your mind solidify that this might be his name, well, we're gonna throw a monkey wrench in here really quick. <laughs> As in the year 1971, Disney's On Parade actually released a different name for the prince. And yes, keep in mind, we are still referring to Cinderella's prince right now, and that's very important. As Disney On Parade referred to Cinderella's prince, as Prince Otto Auguste Ferdinand. Now, for those Disney fans out there who may know of some other unnamed Disney princes, you might have thought that this name actually refers to a different Disney prince. Well, we're gonna put a pin in this and we're actually gonna talk about this name specifically a little bit later on the list when we get to some of the other Disney princes who are gonna appear on this list. <laughs> so yes, as of right now, Prince Charming is the official title for His Majesty from the movie Cinderella. And I think for now, we're gonna put a pin in that and maybe we'll come back and talk about him in a little bit. <laughs> but next we're gonna move on up to number seven on my list, who is the character Dumbo. Now you might be thinking, what? Why is Dumbo on this list considering he has a name, Dumbo? Well, don't you worry, we're gonna get into it. Now the character of Dumbo, of course, can be found in the Disney animated movie, Dumbo. And while the character of Dumbo does not speak in his original animated movie, and therefore we can't give credit to any specific voice actor, he is the titular character of his movie, and so we follow him throughout the entire plot of the movie. And the specific reason why I wanted to include Dumbo on today's list is that every single person gets his name wrong. Everyone. <laughs> As if you happen to rewatch this beautiful Disney animated movie, you will know at the very beginning of this movie when Dumbo is hand-delivered to his mother, Mrs. Jumbo, by the stork, this adorable little elephant is given a name. Mrs. Jumbo looks at her beautiful new little son and calls him Jumbo Jr. Of course, named after her, but as a junior. And so where does the name Dumbo come from? Well, it is later revealed when Dumbo is unwrapped from his adorable little swaddling clothes that his ears are, well, abnormally large for a baby elephant. It is upon this revelation that all of the other elephants within the cart begin to make fun of him. And what is the name that they decide upon? Dumbo. However, interestingly enough, for the rest of this film, everyone refers to this elephant as Dumbo, and so does the movie title. And considering the name Dumbo is used by the Walt Disney Company, not only to talk about the animated feature, but also to reference the character. And it's also the name of this character's attraction, Dumbo the Flying Elephants. When referring to the little baby elephant that leads this animated movie, I so rarely hear him called by his actual name, which is Jumbo Jr. And while yes, I am absolutely 100% guilty of actually calling him Dumbo like all the time, much like everybody else on the planet. <laughs> In doing research for this video and looking up specific instances of characters' names and how they've been skewed, I actually question quite a bit as to why the general public, the Disney fandom, and even Disney itself refers to this animated character this way. Considering this specific name came out of a very mean-spirited nature from all of the other elephants, in calling him Dumbo, they were trying to demean him and make him feel bad. Him and also his mother. And so the fact that we still call him this to this day and refer to the character this way, I don't know, it's a little, I, I see, I think it's a little disheartening. I don't know about you. And so the fact that the world pretty much still refers to him as this name, Honestly, I find it a little confusing, but regardless, I sort of am with everybody on this where I just refer to him as Dumbo, but who knows, maybe now, maybe I'll start calling him Jumbo Jr. Maybe I'll, I'll be a rebel. <laughs> but regardless of what we call him, I think Dumbo absolutely does a beautiful job of capturing our hearts in this movie. But I also think it's important to remember that that is not his name. His name is Jumbo Jr. And so I'm just gonna leave that right there and we're gonna move on up to the next number. <laughs> as next, we're gonna move on up to number six on my list who is the Feather Duster. Now, the Feather Duster can be found in the Disney animated movie, Beauty and the Beast. And in the original animation, this character is voiced by Kimmy Robertson. Now, in this original animated movie, her name is actually 
Fifi, spelled F-I-F-I. -F -I. And so technically, when referring to her from the original animated movie, I do call her Fifi. However, I tend to just refer to her as the Feather Duster for a very specific reason, which is that in almost every new iteration of the story Beauty and the Beast that has been released by the Walt Disney Company, she has a completely different name. As we've already discussed in the original animated movie, her name is Fifi. A few years after the animated movie was released, Disney took the story of Beauty and the Beast to Broadway, where the character's name was changed to Babette. Now, of course, being on Broadway, her role was expanded a little bit to make her more of a well-rounded character, along with the other enchanted objects. But even though we fleshed her out a little bit more on Broadway, this name still didn't stick, seeing as when Disney decided to adapt Beauty and the Beast into live action, her name was changed yet again, as in the live-action version of Beauty and the Beast, her name is Plumette. And once again, while you may be thinking, well, those are the three big iterations, there is still one more name that Disney has conjured up for this adorable little feather duster, <laughs> which is actually in a comic book. As in the New Adventures of Beauty and the Beast, a comic book released by Disney, the comic book refers to her as Marie. Same animation, same drawing as the original animated movie, but she is called Marie. And in all of my research, I honestly don't know if there's a specific reason as to why this specific character's name has changed so much. So while technically, yes, all of these names are official and canon because they all come from a very specific version of the retelling of the story, it's kind of hard to distinguish who we're talking about, unless we actually refer to her as what she appears as, which is a feather duster. So while technically if anybody refers to her as Plumette, or Babette, or Fifi, or Marie, they're not wrong. And so while yes, this is a relatively simple story surrounding a Disney character's name, I do find it strange. I'm curious as to if anybody else out there has any other reasoning as to why her character name changes so much. I personally couldn't find any in my research, but if any of you know, please let me know down in the comments. I am very curious. <laughs> but next, friends, we're going to move on up to number five on my list, who are the Hitchhiking Ghosts. Now, this is such a fun story. I can't wait to get into it. Now, while yes, the Hitchhiking Ghosts do currently have what are considered canon names, the story surrounding how they got them is quite interesting. Now, while the Hitchhiking Ghosts can't be seen in an original Disney animated movie, they can be seen in an original Disney park attraction, which is of course the Haunted Mansion. And while in their first appearance they were both nameless and voiceless, well, one of those things has changed. All three characters technically do not speak as they don't speak in their original attraction, and also in any meet and greet situation they are also mute. The three iconic hitchhiking ghosts can be seen in every single iteration of the Haunted Mansion worldwide, with the exception of Phantom Manor and Mystic Manor. These characters are three ghosts who, upon their creation, did not have specific names, but were referred to as little nicknames. And as we all know, there is a tall ghost, a medium height ghost, and then a very short ghost, so we're just gonna name them in that order throughout this segment. How they were originally referred to from tallest to shortest were the skeleton, the traveler, and the prisoner. And how these characters got their semi-official names was actually from a cast member's backstory. As in the ghost gallery, which is a sort of cast member created backstory for the attraction, the trio is fleshed out a little bit more and is actually given some names. Again, from tallest to shortest, their names are Ezra, Phineas, and Gus. Well, as the names were used more and more for these characters over the years, Disney eventually seemingly adapted them into canon names, seeing as these names have been adapted not only into merchandise, but also seemingly into the ride itself, with certain gravestones popping up in the queue line. This is one of the rare instances where the fans calling Disney characters that are nameless by specific names actually ended up having their names very much changed in the eyes of Disney, seeing as between fans and cast members calling these characters Phineas, Gus, and Ezra, those names really began to stick, and it got to the point where 
Disney really couldn't ignore it anymore, and so their names definitely show up more and more as time goes on. Now while of course over the years they have appeared in some other animated iterations, and also as meet and greet characters at Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, the three hitchhiking ghosts are probably the most well known for their stance towards the end of the Haunted Mansion attraction where they are silent yet thumbing to come along with you home. Taking along their canon names with them now, I guess. <laughs> but yes, while technically fan names have been used for a lot of Disney characters over the years, this is really the only instance of fan or cast member created names that I've found in my research that technically have stuck and even in the eyes of the Disney company. And that just goes to show that if we call for change, it can certainly happen. <laughs> Alrighty, my friends, we have reached my top four. My top four is probably some of the most controversial within the Disney fandom surrounding character names. And so I can't avoid it anymore. Let's jump into number four on my list, who is the prince. Now, once again, we need to define this character because if we're just calling every single Disney prince the prince, how are we going to know who we're talking about? Well, for number four, we are very specifically talking about Snow White's Prince. And seeing as this character is Snow White's Prince, the prince appears in the original Disney animated movie Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. He is beautifully voiced by actor Harry Stockwell, and this character did in fact remain nameless in the original animated movie. He was referred to as simply the prince throughout the entire run of the animated movie. However, that has not remained as years have gone by. <laughs> now, as we talked about before with the coachman and the ringmaster, a lot of early Disney movies just referred to Disney characters as their role or their title within the film. And considering the prince isn't really an important character within the runtime of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, it's kind of understandable why his name was left out. It really doesn't seem like a big plot hole that we're missing within the animated film. However, if we look back to an early 1938 comic strip, the prince was actually referred to as Prince Buckethead. And while you might think this is strange right off the bat, this is because there is actually an extended plot line where Snow White has created out of different items surrounding her a almost statue of a prince, whom she refers to as Prince Buckethead, considering the head that she made for him is a bucket. And well, when the prince reveals himself to her near the little statue that she's created, he refers to himself as Prince Buckethead. Next, moving on to yet another name that we have seen for him is Prince Charming, to make things even more complicated between him and Cinderella's prince. <laughs> as both the TV series Once Upon a Time and the Disney mobile game Disney Magic Kingdoms refers to him as Prince Charming. Now to throw yet another name for this character into the mix, and no, still not the ones that you're thinking of, he was also referred to as a different name in the book series Twisted Tales, as he is referenced in the specific book Mirror Mirror, A Twisted Tale, as the name Prince Henrich? Heinrich? Heinrich? H-E-N-R-I-C-H. And while this character has been referred to every single one of these names in one instance or another, they're still not the fan-made names that have stuck with him the most. Let's get into it. Probably the biggest instance of fans latching on to a specific name came from the 1938 Oscars. As at the awards show, Shirley Temple was presenting different awards. And while presenting Walt Disney with his awards, she mentions the name Ferdinand. And while many individuals have interpreted this reference as to that of Snow White's prince, this actually isn't the character that Shirley Temple was referring to, considering Disney had already created an animated short called Ferdinand the Bull. This is a completely different Disney character who is quite literally an animated bull, like with the bull ring and the horns, and not a prince. <laughs> but yes, it is actually confirmed by Dave Smith, who is a Walt Disney Studios historian, that the prince was never given a name during the production of the movie, and neither was Prince Charming from Cinderella. And Dave Smith also did confirm that the Disney studio has never referred to him as Ferdinand. Now, let's move on to the other very heavily used name for this character. <laughs> 
as, do you remember that TV spot that we were talking about back when we were chatting about Prince Charming, where Disney France had given him the name Henry? There was also a mention of Snow White and her prince. Well, this Disney France TV spot referred to the prince as Prince Florian. And later on, Disney On Parade, who also very willingly gave Prince Charming a name, also decided to give a name to the prince from Snow White, which is Alto August Ferdinand. Now, while it is true that these two names were both used in TV spots that are technically not acknowledged by the Disney company, the name Florian or Floran was actually snatched up by Disney fans and countless online articles were written about this character in reference to this name, specifically because for the longest time he never had one, and seemingly Disney had finally decided on a name for him, but this really wasn't the case. And while it was insistent that Disney apparently had used this name in production of the movie, Disney actually used a different name to reference this prince when they were creating the original animated movie, which is the name Frederick, or Friedrich. But yes, to settle the issue on the name of Snow White's prince, there have been many, many fan-made names over the years, as well as different names used by TV spots here and there that Disney simply doesn't acknowledge. In general, the Disney company seemingly only refers to this character as the prince, which does contrast with Cinderella's prince, who is Prince Charming. Now, how do we know that he is only referred to as the prince? Well, the biggest source that I personally have noticed is that if you happen to go up to Snow White or the Evil Queen in the Disney parks, they will never use this name. They will only ever simply refer to him as the prince, or if you are talking to Snow White about him, she might refer to him as my prince. So while yes, these names have appeared over time, they are technically not canon, and I'm so sorry to have to break it to you. <laughs> but next we're moving on up to number three on my list who are the Bimbets. And by the Bimbets, we are of course referring to the triplets from the Disney movie, Beauty and the Beast. In the original animated movie, they are voiced by Mary Kay Bergman and Kath Susie. And at the end of the original animated movie in the credits, you can actually see that there was a credit for Bimbet. And so they were only referred to as that title in the original animated movie. However, again, jumping over to Broadway in the Broadway version of Beauty and the Beast, they are referred to as the Silly Girls. Yet again, moving on to a different iteration of Beauty and the Beast in the live action version, the three triplets are called the Village Girls. As time went on, names actually appeared for them. The names that appeared for them were Claudette, who references the triplet in the red dress, Laurette, who is in the yellow or amber dress, and Paulette, who is in the green dress. Now just to further distinguish them, and as a little fun fact, each of the three triplets actually has a shared hairstyle with a Disney princess. Claudette in the red dress shares a hairstyle with Princess Jasmine, Laurette in the the yellow or amber dress shares a hairstyle with Belle, and Paulette in the green dress shares a hairstyle with Princess Ariel. Now, where do these names come from? Well, there are one of two possibilities. The first is a book series called Disney Princess Beginnings. It is a series of animated storybooks that tell the very beginning of the Disney princess's story from when they are very young. This book series was first released on January 3rd of 2017, and the book surrounding Belle and her origins actually refers to them as Claudette, Laurette, and Paulette. Furthermore, the triplets were also referred to these three names in the Platinum and Diamond edition behind the scenes of Beauty and the Beast. But most commonly, it is the book called Belle's Discovery from the Disney Princess Beginnings book series that first referred to them as this name, and it has been used in a very few instances otherwise. They are still not referred to these names in the Disney parks, however, in certain video games, such as Disney Speedstorm, where the three triplets appear as a little crew member that you can attach onto a racer, they are indeed referred to as Claudette, Laurette, and Paulette. And so in analyzing the situation, I honestly think that it was just a decision of not wanting to call them the Bimbets anymore, which I think is understandable. But from that decision, three names were born, and I think they are actually quite cute, and I like them. But next, we're moving on up to number two on my list. 
who is the Evil Queen. Now, the Evil Queen, of course, comes from the beautiful Disney animated film Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and this character is beautifully voice acted by actress Lucille Laverne. Now, in the movie, she is only referred to as the Queen, or the Wicked Queen, or the Evil Queen. However, the name that constantly surrounds this character in the background is Queen Grimhilda. Now, where does this name come from? Well, it originates in an experimental comic book. As many of you may know, Snow White was Disney's original full-length animated feature, and so the entire project was considered very experimental. And along with the project, a lot of the publicity and the different marketing techniques were also very experimental. And all the way back in the year 1937, a comic book was released to stir up anticipation for the animated film. And in the comic book is where we see the name Queen Grimhilda used. And although this was technically in a comic book released by the Walt Disney Company, this name seemingly has not been used by the company since the original comic book. As in the movie, the Queen is never referred to as this name, and in every iteration of this character afterwards, this name never appears in officially licensed Disney media. Even to the point where in the Twisted Tale book series, she is actually named Queen Ingrid. And considering Twisted Tale came out in significantly more recent years than this original comic strip, it seems that Disney is really trying to put that name on the back burner by even introducing a new name in this book series for Her Majesty the Queen. But I will say for this character, much like the prince, if you go up and actually talk to her in the parks, or if you happen to meet Snow White, the two characters will only ever refer to her as the Queen, or Her Majesty, or, if you're talking to Snow White, her stepmother. So while yes, Queen Grimhilda is actually from the Walt Disney Company themselves, it very much did seem like a part of an experiment, and it just didn't end up sticking with the company, but some fans have really latched onto that name, let me tell you. And I understand, it's it's a very pretty name, but unfortunately, it's still not recognized by the Walt Disney Company. But again, like Phineas, Gus, and Ezra, it's always possible. <laughs> but with that, friends, we have reached number one on my list of controversial name, or lack of name, or something with the name of Disney characters. And let me tell you, this one is probably my biggest headache of them all. <laughs> yes, at number one on my list is The Beast. Now the Beast, of course, comes from the animated Disney film Beauty and the Beast, and he is wonderfully voice acted by actor Robbie Benson. And let me be very clear, in the runtime of Beauty and the Beast, the original animated film, the character is only ever referred to as the Prince, the Beast, or the Master. There is a very famous story surrounding the Beast's name in the development of the animated movie Beauty and the Beast, which was that at the very end, during the final battle sequence, Belle had to call out to the Beast, but animators said, well, we haven't given the Beast a name, so what is she gonna say? Well, in the original animated movie, Belle calls out Beast, and so the character received this general name who many refer to him as, which is the Beast. To continue on, in the Broadway version of Beauty and the Beast, he is also only ever referred to as the Beast or the Prince, and it is the very same case for the live-action version of Beauty and the Beast where Dan Stevens' portrayal is only referred to as the Beast, the Master, or the Prince. Now even further on top of that, Two direct-to-DVD animated sequels have been produced for Beauty and the Beast. And once again, in both of these, he is only ever referred to as the Beast. In addition, TV shows and books have been written about the Beast and have only referred to him as the Beast. And famous Disney animator Glenn Keane, who was the chief animator on the Beast, also confirmed that a name was never given to this character, and that he was only ever referred to as the Beast. And so, with all of this concrete evidence, you would think that the character's name is the Beast, right? Well, wrong. <laughs> In comes the bane of my existence, the 1998 video game, The D Show. Now, The D Show was a video game created for people to purchase and play in their homes, which was a, essentially, Disney trivia game. And in probably one of the most infamous 
moments ever by the Walt Disney Company, this question came about, which is, what is the beast's name in the animated movie? And the answer that was correct in the video game was Prince Adam. Now let me be very clear on this topic. This game was developed by the company Cyberflix and released under Disney Interactive, which was a subset of a Disney gaming department. This game was not created itself by Disney, but the characters were licensed out for another company to create it. In addition of season two of High School the Musical, the musical, the series, <laughs> when the musical Beauty and the Beast is being put on, he is also in the TV series referred to as Prince Adam. In addition, Dan Stevens, who played the Beast in the live action film, referred to him as Prince Adam in an interview. On top of all of that, Paige O'Hara, the original speaking and singing voice of Belle in Beauty and the Beast, did an interview where she answered some fans' questions and to directly quote the princess herself, quote, Disney will always deny it, end quote, but some animators and crew members on Beauty and the Beast did refer to him as Prince Adam. So while I could technically say that all of this is nowhere near an official naming of the prince, in comes the final piece of evidence and the final nail in my coffin, <laughs> which is over at the Disney World Resort, Port Orleans Riverside, there are a few very beautiful portraits of Disney princes that adorn the walls within the royal rooms. And on this silhouette of the beast in his prince form, it is in fact labeled Prince Adam. So where do we go with this information? Is his name Prince Adam? Is it not? Well, no recent official merchandise has been released with this character's name. In addition, if you happen to meet Belle in the park, she will only refer to him as the beast or the prince. And while technically, nods have been given by significant players in the Beauty and the Beast realm to this character's name, there is really no official evidence surrounding this character's name. And considering Paige O'Hara, Belle herself, has said Disney will always deny it, I think it is relatively safe to say that we know Disney's wishes surrounding this character's name. And so I personally will only be referring to him as the Beast. Whew, but with all of that, friends, we have ranked and talked about all of the Disney characters that are either nameless or have some sort of story surrounding their iconic name. Thank you so much for watching. I had so much fun talking about all of these fun stories surrounding iconic Disney character names. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like and subscribe down below so that way you never miss out on future magic from me. In addition, you can always find me on my other social medias at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's, and I am on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. I'm also going to be leaving a link up above to a full ranking playlist which contains all of my Disney rankings that I have done so far on my channel, and I am so unbelievably grateful for all of the love and support that I have been getting on these videos. You guys are so incredibly amazing and I love you so so much. Again, thank you so much for watching. Stay magical and until next week, I'll see you all real soon.